three to four times the population density of this area here. It's dramatic when you see all of the shading. You know, you drive through the Midwest and the farms and you see uh, little farms here and there, but every one of these pixels and things are thousands of people. Now, this is the most populous and most dense area in the entire United States, and these two, or these three areas on the West Coast, around Seattle, Los Angeles, and San Diego, are also heavily, or San Francisco and Los Angeles are heavily populated. In a crisis, any crisis and where infrastructure is cut off, these people are going to start to migrate outward. There is nothing there. There's no job to keep them. Suddenly, everybody wants to be relocated strategically. And uh, there's a lot of people thinking about it. That's why the prepper movement is so big. A lot of people can't do anything about it. I would say, I think there's a ratio of about 10 to 1. People thinking about preparedness versus those that are actually preparing. So preparedness has increased maybe tenfold in the past two years. That means there's 200-fold of people who are thinking about it but aren't going to be prepared. But nevertheless, when these things start to fall out, they're going to be fleeing as fast as they can with everyone else. And so it's important to track how those people are going to leave those major cities when you make decisions about leaving, especially if you decide that you're going to move out into the periphery of these areas You've got to be very careful to make sure that those outflows of refugees well, that's aren't coming down for us. I mean, during the Great Depression, uh, you know, my grandparents, people talked about just people walking down the roads and begging, can I chop some wood for some food? They're like, we already have people chop wood, but here's a little food. But by the end of the Depression, they'd almost hunted out all the squirrels, all the deer. And my family were landowners and upper middle class. And they almost lost everything in the Great Depression. And that was just a depression that the elite engineered to consolidate power. I mean, my gosh, under Agenda 21 and all this, uh, once the public figures out they need to get out of Dodge, it's too late. We also have the example of World War II. World War II in Germany, we have the example of the Russians coming in and every German city was being emptied out to get away from the Russians. They did not want to be occupied. Literally, entire cities were emptying out, taking to the roads. And so we know how far they go afar afield of the roads trying to get food and water and hitting the farmhouses. And basically, it was within about five to seven miles apart from every road where those farms would all be looted. And so... You have to take those kinds of things into consideration when you're considering, yes, going rural, what may look rural. That's what I call strategic thinking. You can't just think about how nice and idyllic it is in, in rural Boston, out in the suburbs. You've got to look how far am I away from a major county road that goes out there and it's going to be streaming with refugees. Refugees, there's going to be famine. They're going to be out of water, out of gas. They're going to start spanning out within walking distance. And that, for most people that are tired and hungry and modern day people, is about five miles. You've got to be beyond that. So the people so don't want to.